for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report in the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And we saw the giants and the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we are in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? God's children, the Israelites, had just been released from captivity and slavery after 400 years. 400 years is a long time. Not only had they been released from slavery, but the Lord made way for them to walk across a Red Sea on dry land. And their enemies were in pursuit of them then God drowned the very ones who sought to destroy them. Then God guided them in the daytime by cloud. And when the sun had sunk behind the western hemisphere and darkness covered the earth. God led them with a pillar of fire by night. When they got hungry, they knew what it was for God to make a way out of nowhere. No Windexes, no Piggly Wigglies, no Cash Savers. God fed them with manna from on high. When they got thirsty and they came to places where water was bitter and they could not drink. God made a way out of no way and turned bitter water into drinking water. Then, in the wilderness, God carried their leader. Moses to the Mount of Sinai yes, sir. Yes, sir. and gave them commandments to lead them and to guide them that they were to live by not only in the wilderness but in the land yes, sir. Yes, sir. that God had promised them Amen. and their fathers. In only 11 days after the giving of the commandments to Moses and the children of Israel, they are on 
the border of the land that God had promised them. The Lord gave instructions to Moses and the Aaron to look out from among the 12 tribes of Israel and, 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 and find your finest men, your finest leaders. <clears throat> and I want you to send them as spies into the land of Canaan and bring us back a report. <laughs> Now, I know some smart and you're sitting out there. Now, why in the world would the Lord promise you a land? <laughs> and then turn around and send folk to spy out what God has promised. And I just believe as I use my black preacher's eavesdropping imagination <laughs> is that some of us are just looking for an event, God. I said, we're looking for an event, God. Lord, I need you to show up at the wedding. <clears throat> Lord, I need you to show up at the funeral. <clears throat> Lord, I, I need you to show up when the meal barrel runs dry. <clears throat> I want you to show up when I'm shackled in chains and feathers. But God is not looking for just a God to be our God in an event. God wants to be our God in life. God, is, you know, some folk are just Sunday folk. Amen. Time is out for us being just God's folk on Sunday. God needs some Monday folk. God needs some hump day folk. God needs some Saturday folk. God is not just looking for a God to be God during our events and episodes in our life. So God sent the spies to spy out the land because God wanted us to participate in his promises and in his life every day. Because you all do remember that in the book of Joshua that God told Joshua that I want you to go and I'm going to send you and I'm going to be with you just like I was with Moses and everywhere your foot trod, I am going to give you the land. You see, you can't stop with God with just an event. You, you can't just stop with God when he gets you up off of your sick bed. You, you can't just quit with God when he gives you the job that you want. You can't just quit with God after he pays your bill. You, you can't quit with God after he opens the door. God wants us to be active and present and relating in relation with him, with him from the start to the end. Anybody here need to know this morning is that the crown is only given to those who finish the race. Amen. You may be slow, but you got to finish. You don't have to come in first place, but you got to finish. I will give to him the crown of life to the one who endures to the end. I come too far. I I'm too far on the road now. The Lord has brought me such a long way that, that I can't turn back now. What God promised Joshua that where his foot trod, that God would give it to him. You can't stop at God's promise. Because see, God promises are conditional. Hey man, you know, some of us, I uh, thank God is some sanctified Santa Claus. Praise God, praise God. 
some great pumpkin on Halloween. <laughs> you know, and, and we one of those, you know, uh, one of those, when it comes to God, we want to hit it and quit it. We want to be one and done. But God's promises are conditional. God said that if you keep my commandment and if you follow my law, if you don't turn from the left and the right, when you walk across the land, I am going to give it to you. 11 days. Joshua, Caleb, 10 others, go into Canaan. And they stayed 40 days. They stayed 40 days. 40 is an important number in the Bible. Uh, we'll find and discover because of that this will be, they will wonder for 40 years. And 40 represents a generation. Jesus fasted in the wilderness for 40 days. And they would go into Canaan and they would spy out the land for 40 days. And the text said that they came back to Moses and Aaron and the congregation. And this also teaches us in this lesson of our accountability, amen, to, to one another. You know, you got some church members, and, and, and this way you'll check. You know, their spiritual maturity because some folk you can't check. <laughs> you know, some folk you, you can't tell them yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, Come on. when they are in error. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God that folk. When we grew up and when I grew up, didn't let me have my way. Amen. Amen. I grew up in a generation where you didn't do just what you wanted to do. Amen. Amen. We had folk that would check us. Amen. Thank God for those school teachers who would call us to the side and and tell us about ourselves. They didn't say it out loud, but sometimes they call you out your name in, uh, when you were by yourself. Thank God for the, the late Cleveland Lee Spark when she would observe the girls in, in the hallway and she said, I, I need to talk to y'all. Uh, boys, y'all get out the room. And sometimes she would even put us out, but she would tell those girls, she said, I see y'all in the hall when the boy call your name and beg for you, here you go. She said, if a man want to see you, if a boy want to see you, you don't go see what he want, he ought to come to you. I thank God for folk who put us in check. Thank God for, for Miss Dean, my Sunday school teacher. Uh, every Sunday we go home and tell mom that Miss Dean was mean. And I think she was. Mama, Miss Dean pulled our ears. The dean pinched us this morning. And when we went home and told Mama what Miss Dean did and how she treated us, Mama didn't call Sister Dean on the phone and cuss Sister Dean out. Because guess where we were next Sunday? Thank God for folk who would let us do what we wanted to do. <laughs> For those of us who used to sneak off, you know, when you thought you were big enough, sneak off, Hawk, you know, y'all had a candy lady around here somewhere, amen, who was open on Sunday. Yeah. 
and your mama has given you a quarter, amen, to put in church, to put a nickel in Sunday school and save the 20. Uh, but we learned division when we were real young because we may save a dime for church and a nickel for Sunday school, but we kept a dime for the candy lady. And while church was going on, we would sneak off, so we stopped, amen. We could always leave and go to the candy lady, but the problem we had was coming back. Because Leroy Mason and Albert Stinson would catch us on our way back and pull us by our collars and our heels and give us a swift uh, swat in our pants on our hind side because they were just keeping us in the chat. that we can get to the point to know that we are accountable to each other and when we go wrong and when we get wrong that somebody love us enough any of y'all ever had to put y'all foot on y'all child's neck Andy Jones. That was Greg and Brenda Mama from Alberta City, Miss Rosa Brooks. <laughs> Raising her grandchildren, and Brenda decided one Sunday that she was going to get smart with Sister Rosa. And Sister Rosa told her in front of everybody, Girl, I will put my foot on your neck and stretch it like a possum. <laughs> They put us in check and thank God that somebody put us in check because if some of us had not been put in check, we would have been in hell or jail a long time ago. They reported back. You don't go off and do stuff. In the name of the church, and not accountable to the church. Can I get a witness somewhere? They just sent us to the convention. No, they can't. No, they can't. And when they sent you to the convention, yeah. on the Sunday following the, the convention, you had to come back yeah. and do what? Give a report. In a Baptist church, auxiliaries, at least once a year, and it was years ago, but we got away from more. At least in a Baptist church, if you were the leader in an auxiliary, you had to come before the church and have in writing what you have done all year and give warrant to the pastor and warrant to the clergy. Do any of y'all remember that? Y'all don't remember that thing. They put a report back. And then when they came back with the report, they had surveyed the land. They did their reconnaissance. 
and said that this is our evidence that what God said with any man is really in there. They came back with evidence. Let me ask you, is there anybody present this morning got some evidence of the faithfulness of God? Is there anybody here got some evidence that God kept his promise? Is there anybody here with some evidence is that God did make a way? I'm talking about out of nowhere. Some folk thought you were going to lose. You didn't lose what some folk were hoping that you were going to lose. And you got evidence because you should have been dead, but God healed you. But God made a way to put some money in your pocket and help you pay your rent in your house. No, amen. You got some evidence that you should have been divorced, but you were able to stay married. You got some evidence. You should have been fired from the job, but God let you stay there long enough to get a retirement check and some social security. You got some evidence. Should have been in jail, but the case got thrown out. Should have been in jail, but the Lord didn't let you get caught. Amen. Brothers and sisters, when we look over our life, all of us got some evidence that God has been good to us. I got some. I got some. If the devil and your enemy and some of your friends and your foe and some of your own folk had had their way, you wouldn't be sitting here this morning, but look at you.
So that when God commands us to walk with him by faith, it just makes sense to walk with him. I think Paul says it like this in Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God will not have to beg you to serve. God will not have to pay you for everything that you do. You ought to want to give to God because you recognize that everything that you have God gave it to you. Some of us trying to hold on to stuff because we ain't like God going to run out of what we give away. And don't you think God got sense enough to know that when he blessed you, he, he wasn't going to give you all of it. You're trying to hold on to it. Let me tell you something. The silver and gold belong to him. And God got money. They ain't never been spent. God got clothes that ain't never been worn. God got houses that no one has ever lived in. God got bread that ain't never been baked. Are y'all hearing me? And so then when God asks us or commands us to journey with him by faith, he's already been good to us. And uh, we already have everything that God really loves us. Because of what he's already done. I'm going to my seat and I, yes, Caleb and Joshua were saying, yes, in the land is a fortified city. Yes, in the in that land, yeah, the giants are in that land. No, no, but because God has promised, they said, Come on, let's go up at once and take the land. No, no, yeah, but there were ten other spies who. Walk the same ground that Caleb and Joshua walked. Yeah, they saw the same thing that Caleb and Joshua saw. They saw the wall and they saw saw the giants. But uh, the, the text said that ten brought back down an evil report. <laughs> yeah, uh, because down uh, in uh, the Canaan of Canaan, well, uh, they had a different report uh, and a different perspective. 
Find cool. 
he's in charge. If you made Jesus your choice, if you're watching us via Facebook, YouTube, amen, write us and let us know that you want to be a part of this fellowship. You ought to give your life to Christ. Yeah. Tithe and offering. Go in peace. 